stop to the music uh oops <laughs> um okay so this is what we're going to do today i just want to do a quick um video or live stream on stable diffusion again so if you haven't got stable diffusion it is in the description to this video grab stable diffusion install it onto your computer and then you can follow along with what i'm trying to do here um and this just for starters we're just going to jump Music can be there quietly. It'll be quiet there if I live music. Uh, it looks like my mic's louder. Okay, so hopefully it doesn't skip on me. These have a tendency to skip, especially if I am trying to use Stable Diffusion at the same time. Actually, that music's going to distract me. Between dreams and reality. Well, just take your clothes off. I can't say. Take it off. Right. No music. <laughs> no frills. Um, here we are in Photoshop and uh, this is where I'm at with this image. So this has been through Stable Diffusion, but this started as a photo. So I took a reference photo. This is the reference photo. So I started with a reference photo, which I think is the best way to go. And then I did a painting of this reference photo in oil paints. So this is the oil painting, um, which is actually a painting based on two photos. The photo of the model and a photo I took um, at a, a pottery, a, a pottery? I'm definitely not pronouncing that right, um, at, at a camping site, or coming back from a camping site um, in Coromandel. So, so that's the step, took a photo, painted this, and then the next step from that is I created an image prompt from this, um, because this is, this is too big. So this is the image prompt that I created because I wanted a rectangular sort of size. And I took this image prompt and I loaded it into Stable Diffusion. So let's repeat the steps a little bit, if I can remember, yep, I can remember where this image prompt is. Um, and jump into Stable Diffusion now and I'll show the steps I took to get to where I am now. <laughs> um, so I'm running this version of Stable Diffusion. Might actually help if I show it. Still in the Photoshop screen. So here we go, in Stable Diffusion. So, <laughs> so I'm running this version of Stable Diffusion. I'll just um, try and move the browser so it I think that's made a difference. Cool. Where is let's light that up, that up as well? So underneath this window, I think I've said before, is the command prompt that's running Stable Diffusion on my local drive. If you want to run uh, Stable Diffusion on your local drive, check out the, the description and download from the description. So straight up. I need to change my settings. So I changed my settings um, based on how I created the image prompt. And when I created the image prompt, I made sure that I stayed within the limitations of. Actually, I I tried to push the uh, push the software a little bit, or push this version of the beta a little bit. So I made the height ten twenty four, and I made the width seven six eight. 
Um, now let's go and grab the image. Oh great, we're in the right prompt folder. So this is the prompt for it, NP05vert. I've got a cataloging system now for my image prompts because it's getting hard to keep track of everything and for my outputs. So we, I changed this to Goddess of Spring. And then I've got some, then I added the image modifier. So I, I scrolled down to the image modifiers and went into visual, visual style, excuse me. And I changed that to Art Nouveau. And then for the artist modifiers, I went down into this drop down menu here and selected Art Station and Art Germ. Um, I did not select Alphonse Mocha, I don't think, but I'll, no, I did not select Alphonse Mocha. So I just had those three, I think. Art Nouveau, Art Station, and Art Germ with that image prompt and that text prompt. So that's basically it. Aside from changing the initial resolution to 768 by 1024, which is the same as what I created the image prompt to. The seed is set to random image, and I created, at the time, I created six images. So two images at once, but I wanted six images. But just, just an example, I'm just going to generate two because um, I'm just showing what I did to get to this stage. And then I think I had the prompt strength up at about 0.25. So very low. It's like 25% um, of the text and these image modifiers and 75% is leaning towards the initial image itself. I did not have upscale the image set, not till later. Um, and I didn't have fixed incorrect eyes, um, faces or eyes set because um, that was a problem. So <laughs> anyhow. Because um, I didn't want to change it that much, basically. I wanted to keep some of my initial painting style. So again, if, if I haven't, I'll go over this, how I use this interface again. Um, basically, this is the image settings. Your text prompts at the top. This is where you choose your file for image, you know, for an image prompt. And this is where the modifiers are. Or where it shows up from when you select them here. Down here is where all your image modifiers are with these different menus that are all unexpanded and you can just expand them and go through all of these. If you don't know what this is or what these are, go check out my last video, Getting Started in Stable Diffusion, I think that's what I called it, um, and that's got a good overview of exactly what we're doing here. But this is, again, I'm just going through some steps. So basically, then I just clicked I set it to actually I always set it to 35 because I think 50 is a bit much. It just takes a little bit uh, long. Uh, it takes a while at least for these live streams. So, so for the purpose of this live stream, I'm going to keep it at 35 number of infer inference steps. But the guidance scale, I'm going to change that to 10 because that I found that did make a difference. Okay. So now we're going to click on make image. Now, since I last did this um, video. I last did a live stream using the software, um, it has changed. And that was only like 48 hours ago. So in the last 48 hours, they've added this menu here, or this um, little window here, which shows the process, um, it shows the current job. So this is a prompt, Goddess of Spring, Art Nouveau, Art Station by Art Germ. That's the seed and all the information there that is loaded in with the image settings. And that's where it's at with the processing at the moment. And it's going to take 23 seconds to finish that, which is pretty quick. Um, so that's basically where I started at. Now I can hear the birds chirping, which means the sun is rising, which means I've literally worked through the night. I'm working on an edit job at the moment, creating a virtual, or I've already created a virtual Gotham City. And I'm, I've been playing around with that and compositing and with a, a Batman or Bat Savage character for a video for a client. Okay, so 
this doesn't look that great. Um, so I'm going to pump up the inference strip steps to 100. And it's deforming my initial image too much. So I'm going to drop the prompt strength down to 0.15. So it's going to take a lot longer to generate this, but there we go. So again, that's uh, these are the new changes, some of the new changes. One, you've got this new window here. The other thing that is different is that it didn't used to hold the images once it generated them. Once you collected make, essentially just these disappeared. So this is kind of cool that it actually you know keeps this in the memory. On the software, but I would imagine this is taking up a bit of VRAM just to have that preview in there. So I'm going to get rid of them. You've got the option to remove them. We don't need them. They neither of them worked out. They they look terrible. This one's really deformed. So remove them. Forget they ever existed. But the other thing that changed is you've got an option to stop here in this window, which wasn't there before. So I thought this is really cool. A little additional. Kind of um, feature and um, it's almost like they listened to what I was saying about the fact that you can you know add another job um, while the other one's sort of working because now you've got in queue next image where you, I can literally select a new image and uh, start a new job or set up a new job job with new settings and it will queue it up here or maybe I'll I can show you how to do that. So I'll literally, I'll, I'll do a new job now. Excuse me, excuse me, I'm exhausted. <laughs> um, oh, here we go, yes. Here's our first job. So um, so what I did was when I first ran it, I kind of grabbed an image like this. So I'm going to use this as our input image now. So now I've stepped away from our first, from the pure oil painting and now I'm using an interpretation of from stable diffusion of my painting though it's really very close to my painting it's only a few steps away because uh, at least my painting is anatomically sort of correct <laughs> way more anatomically correct than its monstrosities from a, from a first run I'm gonna make sure that it's still selecting random image and I'm gonna hit make image again so now it's, it's going to do our next job, but it's using this image here as our leaping spot, our leaping point for the next gen, the next generation of seeds. Um, so that's kind of cool, again, because you can go back, if you keep it up, you can, you can just scroll down and go back and select this image again. Or you can keep on piggybacking on these new images. So, which I'll, sh I'll show you what I mean by that um, in a second. Assuming that you can actually hear me okay. Webcam is up and streaming. Okay, cool. All right, let's go back to Stable Diffusion. I can hear it cranking away in the background. 53% done. It's almost finished. You can see what it's sort of done here with the hands. Stable Diffusion does not do a good job with hands. So at some point I should probably show a step-by-step -step of how I sort of go up in prompt strengths in order to get something that's stylized but re re retaining enough of the original image that it isn't so different. Okay, so that's not bad. Um, it's starting to warp this arm a bit. But we're going to use, this as the next, we're going to piggyback this. This isn't quite what I did before. Excuse me, I should probably, excuse me, I should probably be going and getting some sleep. Because, again, I've been working through the night, but I'm going to pump that up to 0.3. Hopefully I don't look too shell-shocked right now. So I'm jumping the prompt up, and I'm using this, this seed as my next 
leaping point. Now I can make the image. So yeah, that's kind of cool. So if I wanted to, I could go back to what this this session and reselect this prompt if I felt like this wasn't progressing. But I, I do think this is progressing a little bit. At least I can see that my strokes are disappearing. Um, and this is, I mean, that's pretty close to the stage it was before I pulled it into Photoshop. So, yeah, we'll see what, what it produces with this next generation. It's going to take a minute, 55 seconds, because, you know, it always takes a little bit longer when you up the prompt strength. So, again, that's something to bear in mind when you're using the software. The, the more the prompt strength, the longer the processing time. And I'd imagine more VRAM. Yeah, definitely getting tired now. One minute through three seconds. And then I want to, I'm probably going to jump pretty quickly out of this and into Photoshop just to show you what I've been doing in Photoshop. Um, or what I'm going to do because I should get some rest. So um, I'll pin this once I get to the next step and then I'll do another video which will be part two. So this will be part one just to show you the stable diffusion step. But there's going to be another stable diffusion step that will come later because I think I've got a plan to create like a motion graphic from layers that I create using stable diffusion and in Photoshop with an After Effects, animating them in After Effects. So, the, you know, I'm using three different pieces of software. Stable Diffusion, Photoshop, and um, After Effects, eventually. And then I'm going to bring it all home in DaVinci Resolve. <laughs> um, it's only 6.47, so I should probably keep volume down. Just speaking loud because of the microphone. I'll just bring the microphone closer. Okay, eight seconds. Let's see. 0.3 or thirty percent of a of the prompt. Yeah, it can create some monstrosity. Look what it's done to this arm. That's terrible. So I'm not going to waste waste my time. Yeah, useless. Can't use any of those. I could have used this, and I can still. But um, it's kind of relevant. Let's just jump out of Stable Fusion, get into Photoshop, and I'll show you what I did with the next step, which was around about this stage. So. But it was a different version of uh, of Photoshop as well, which <laughs> just to make things more complicated. All right, into Photoshop we go. Okay, so from Photoshop, I had generated this. So this is what I had generated from um, Stable Diffusion which is a little bit messier actually than what we managed to achieve just before. Um, I could actually, what I'll do is I'll bring in, I'll bring in the output that we just created. So if we go into AI Gems, into output, oops, into AI Picks, and here, quite a bit of use of spring, view, large icons, and which one is it? Simplify, date modified, one of these two, this one. I think that's it. Let's have a look. Just uh, check in Stable Diffusion. Just bear with me. No, that's not it. <laughs> nah. Um. That's. The, I think that's the one. Okay, cool. So the first thing I did in Photoshop 
from a stable diffusion was just, you know, upscale it. The version I had was already upscaled, so I mean that's one difference. So if I go into image size now, you can see it's set to 72 DPI. So I initially I just changed it to 300, um, and I also changed the pixel size to 4,000. So essentially, this is pretty close to what I what I did. And then I used another form of AI. I used a neural filter. I'm just going to check here. To make sure everything is up properly. Now I don't know if um, I know that this has some neural filters, but I don't know if it's got the meter neural filter that I used. But we'll jump into the neural filters and have a look um, and see if it's got photo reconstruction. And it does not. So that's actually how I did it. I jumped um, into photo reconstruction, which it doesn't have actually have here. Um, but what I can sort of do is maybe just do some skin smoothing and uh, let's just create some smoothness on her face. Can't tell if it's actually doing it or not. Go okay. Um, I wonder if I can bring up the other version. Probably not. But basically what I used was the Photoshop beta version, not this version of Photoshop. This is just the standard version of Photoshop. And um, let's close that off. And the Photoshop beta version of Photoshop, uh, of Photoshop gave me an earlier version of my rework, this. And uh, you can see I've, I've been playing around with it quite a bit. So, but all I'm really doing in this version of Photoshop is kind of mushing around the pixels, <laughs> which I'll show you exactly how I'm doing it. Um, I have a, um, sort of a Huion graphics tablet and a pen, so I can like draw on the screen, which um, is really a lifesaver when it comes to using Photoshop. So what I used is this little pen tool here, the smudge tool. And I just literally painted over the top of my stable diffusion generation. And I started just by doing some, some basic, what do you call like, plastic surgery on, on the face. Uh, see, it's not going to work. So because um, I've been stuffing around, you can see it's just warping. <laughs> so I'm going to show you what I what I did in the part two, and I'm going to stop the stream because it, it's not working out. But yeah, so basically I bought it in, and then I used the smudge tool, which is not working for me at the moment, and just smeared around in the layers maybe I, I can possibly show you in, with the mouse what does it look like it's, it looks like it's moved yeah <laughs> that's better um if i zoom in on a point on her that say a part of her here you can see this was way more upscaled um and it's really hard to draw with the mouse but um Basically, here's the smudge tool, and I, I grab the smudge tool, and then I from that I can just sort of smear out and create more detail using the smudge tool. And because I'm using quite a small, like, brush, this is really hard with the mouse, um, it, it can give me some quite finer sort of points and detail. And it's almost like I'm painting, what well, is like I'm painting again. Essentially, I'm smearing around paint like I'm like I was smearing the oil paint. So you can see I'm just sort of working here with her hair tips. So, in part two, we're gonna really amp this up a little bit, and I'm gonna what I'm gonna do when I come back to this later on, possibly after I um, set my render because I'll set my render for my um, Gotham City background, and I'll go get some sleep, and then come and do this. 
maybe about midday if I wake up. Um, but yeah, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do next with this because I'm going to separate all these layers because that's what Photoshop is really good for. And what this, using a pen tool, like a graphics pen tablet is really useful for is painting masks. So I'm going to paint the masks in Photoshop and separate them all. And then I'm probably going to export the different layers as separate files and create separate files for all of the different background elements from the original painting. So the original painting is this painting. So I'm going to take this painting and I'm going to separate all these different elements, the foreground elements, these different plants, or some of the different plants, the branches, um, there's a couple of layers of branches. I don't know how crazy I'm going to get, but at least some of them, so I can separate them. Definitely the background elements in the sky, and definitely the, the character itself is all going to be separated um, using masking in Photoshop. So <laughs> if you're interested in that, pay attention or subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube, but pay attention to my live streams, um, and you'll have to click notifications to get that as well. And I'll show you the next step where I separate these layers and then I'm going to create an animation. So that I, I was definitely going to be doing that sometime today. Don't ask me what time because um, I've got paid work to do <laughs> and deadlines to finish. And I have no idea. I've got other clients as well and I might get emails from other clients within the day. But yeah, the only, only real way to know is to go onto my YouTube channel and subscribe and hit notifications so that you see when I go live and then I'll show you what I'm going to do next. So yeah, but uh, again, initially just, just as an insight on how to use Stable Diffusion, this is a good start. So download Stable Diffusion, that, well the version that I'm using from the description um, on this video, go install it and then Go through some of these stages, get to this point if you have a picture that uh, you're working with or a photograph that you've taken, and then I'll show you what I'm going to do in the next step. Obviously, if I'm going to be using After Effects, I'm using After Effects, Stable Diffusion, Photoshop, so you, you have to have Adobe Cloud, or at least those two software packages um, in order to, to do the, these next stages. You can possibly do the compositing stage in... DaVinci, you can definitely do it in DaVinci Resolve, but I'm still figuring out DaVinci, DaVinci Resolve, but you can use Fusion to do it as well, and DaVinci Resolve is free, but you're still going to need Photoshop, so <laughs> yeah, um, it's kind of an essential part of the process, so if you're going to get Photoshop, you might as well get Adobe Creative Cloud if you have the budget. Anyhow, we'll come back to this later, um, and sorry to anybody who's tuning in now, but I'm actually tuning out. And uh, come and have a look later on, and I'm going to do some more painting, some detail painting on this, and separate the layers Create in Photoshop using painted uh, masking. Okay, cool. Right. Bye for now. So I'll see you again in the spring In the spring She plays a fairy But she's a lady The sunflower queen Just don't know where